this rock is a piece of history. It's a meteorite, which makes it a relic of the formation of our Earth and the other planets. But this rock is also a piece of human history. It's a fragment of the asteroid that impacted and exploded over the Russian city of Chelyabinsk in 2013. More than a million people saw, photographed, or felt the destructive effects of this impact. Yet, no one predicted it. With our modern telescopes and computers, how could we have missed this? Detecting a dark rock moving against the black background of space is no easy task. It's December 2011, and a nondescript, house-sized rock orbiting the Sun has begun its year-long fall back into the inner solar system, just as it has done thousands if not millions of times before. Its orbit crosses and actually intersects the orbit of the Earth, but the rock has passed through this intersection point thousands of times without incident, each time simply because the Earth was somewhere else in its own path around the Sun. On New Year's Eve 2012, it swings past the sun for the last time. A month and a half later, on February 15, 2013, it slams into the Earth's atmosphere at a speed of 12 miles per second and explodes. The explosion could have leveled the city had it occurred at lower altitude. As it was, the shockwave shattered windows and injured hundreds. The Chelyabinsk event was the largest and most destructive asteroid impact in more than a hundred years. This animation of the approach of the impactor is a reconstruction after the fact. We had no knowledge of the existence of this asteroid and no warning of the event until the impact actually occurred. Why? Follow the approach again. This time we'll track along with the Earth, looking from the night side toward the Sun into the daytime sky. In late 2012, the asteroid's orbit brought it inside the orbit of the Earth, swinging closer to the Sun. In its final approach, it seemed to dive straight from the direction of the Sun, lost in the glare, completely undetectable. An asteroid can be seen only because it is lit up by the Sun. Even with a telescope, it appears as nothing more than a point of light. How far away that point can be detected depends on how we see it lit. Let's imagine putting ourselves close to the asteroid. With the sun behind us, we see the object fully illuminated, as bright as it ever gets. If we move to the side, with the sun off to the right, we see, at most, only half of the object lit up. And if we look inward, toward the sun, almost all of the object is in shadow, and we see hardly any light at all. So how far away could the Chelyabinsk impactor have been seen by the asteroid search telescopes in operation at the time? About 10 million miles, if they were looking away from the Sun. At right angles to the Sun, about half as far, in either direction. There is a region surrounding the Earth, inside of which the object might have been seen had the telescopes been pointing in the right direction at the right time. But this region is small compared to the orbit. And if we follow the motion for the last eight months before the impact, we can see that the impactor, approaching at the top of the screen, never came close to that region in which it could possibly have been detected. As it came interior to the Earth's orbit, only the shadowed face was visible. There was no opportunity to see it before the impact occurred. But what about earlier? Let's go back in time and see where Earth and the impactor were in previous years. Through 2012 and 2011, the asteroid was far from the Earth, out beyond the orbit of Mars in the most distant and slowest part of its orbit. It swung past the Sun in 2010, but Earth was not nearby. It spent 2009 again in the distant part of its orbit. As it accelerated, and came inside the Earth's orbit in 2008, Earth was on the opposite side of the Sun. 
This is a typical situation for small hazardous asteroids. Years can go by between opportunities for detection or close observation, simply because the orbits of the Earth and the asteroid don't bring them into close proximity. We don't know the orbit of the Chelyabinsk impactor precisely, so projecting back in time is difficult. A close passage may have occurred in February 2004, but outside the zone of discoverability. The best opportunity before that was in 1995, but Earth was farther from the point of intersection. And in 1986, Earth was even farther away. Bigger asteroids can be seen at greater distances and have larger zones of discoverability. But that doesn't guarantee discovery. Consider this object. We don't know whether it exists. It's four and a half times larger in diameter than the Chelyabinsk impactor. But in the past 15 years, while the surveys for faint asteroids have been operating, it's never come into its discoverable zone. It's a purely hypothetical object. It may exist, it may not. It may be on a different orbit. But we have no way of knowing, even now, and years could go by before we find out. Even with modern surveys, it's entirely possible for an object like this one, a hundred times more massive and carrying a hundred times more kinetic energy than Chelyabinsk, to be in an orbit that makes it virtually undetectable until we detect it the hard way.